Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps RC. I've been flying drones for over five years and I've been flying them all around the world. And today I'm gonna pack all this mileage into one video for you for the 2018 Best Drones. We have some of those popular drones on the table right here. We're gonna talk about the features of each, how much they cost, what the range is, the battery life, and all that good stuff. If you're looking for a drone, this is the video to watch. Let's go ahead and get started now with the first one, the DJI Mavic Air. Now we're going to go ahead and start talking about two drones out of the bunch that I have here today. And the most popular drones on the planet right now have to be made by DJI. They own over 60% of the market share in the drone industry worldwide. And one of the most popular drones out there right now is the DJI Mavic Air. And uh, we're seeing some uh, coincidence there that there's a MacBook Air and uh, one of the popular laptops by Apple. They're super slim and they're under three pounds. So they're super easy to carry through the airport. Now everything is getting smaller and smaller, cell phones included, and as well as drones. This is great because this one is around $799 retail value. It has around 100 megabit per second video rate on there, and as well as 60 megabits per second on the Mavic Pro. The original Mavic Pro gets around 26 minutes flight time, and that is acceptable. If you get the Platinum, that's gonna get you an upwards of 30 minutes flight time with that one. Now this one is gonna get you around the 21 minute mark, and that's not bad for about $50 less, but they both do shoot 4K, so absolutely great. If you're gonna be a professional, if you're gonna shoot weddings, real estate, things like that, I'm gonna recommend the Mavic Pro or the Platinum over the Mavic Air. But if you decided to use the Mavic Air, and if you really like how small this one is and how portable it is, it's foldable, that is really nice about this one. Uh, and the 12 megapixel still is gonna be good enough for any real estate website out there, or if you're doing photos on the side for some friends uh, or a friend's wedding. Now, I would probably get the Fly More combo in this. This one's around $1,000 and it comes with three batteries. So that's probably one of the best deals out there right now is the Mavic Pro Air fly more bundle right there. That is the absolute best value in 2018 so far as the making of this video. Because what they did with the DJI Mavic Air is DJI decided to make something 4K video under $1,000 and get you up in the air for over 20 minutes. And that's what a lot of people want. People would come into Best Buy. I'm friends with a lot of guys that sell drones in Best Buy and in the photography departments. And I go in there and I talk to them and they always say there's one guy that walks in there and says, well, my budget's $800. Can I get 4K video and 30 minutes flight time? It's just not happening just quite yet. So uh, keep your demands kind of at a sober level when you go in looking for a drone. If you're gonna buy from Best Buy or other big box retailers, uh, you're probably gonna, the best money that you can spend right now is gonna be around the $800 to $799 for this one battery bundle. Um, and I would probably just go ahead and get the Fly More combo with the extra couple hundred dollars. It's really not uh, a big difference in the two bundles. And one of the best features of the Fly More combo is that you get that awesome charger that's gonna actually charge up to three or more batteries at once. So um, a very nice charger comes along with that one versus the solo charger that comes with the $799 bundle. Now one thing you're absolutely going to have to think about when you're buying both of these drones is do you need shots close to sunset or any low level type environments. If you need a low level type environment shot, you're probably going to want to go with the Mavic Pro over the Mavic Air, mainly because the Mavic Air ISO values are from 100 to 1600 for video and still. So that's going to give you a little more pixelization and graininess in your darker and darker moments when you're shooting video or photos. So keep that in mind. This one's gonna do a little better low light shots and video. Now one thing that is a huge advantage over the smaller DJI Spark is the DJI Spark actually has two axis gimbal on there and it has electronic stabilization in coordination with that two axis gimbal. So what does that mean? These two are gonna shoot a little bit better video because they both do have mechanical three axis stabilized gimbals. And one of the other things that I can't figure out about the Mavic Air is they didn't do folding props on this, and I'm not 100% sure why they did that. They're not quite as long as the body of the drone once it's folded up, but they did do folding props on the Mavic Pro and on the DJI Spark. So it's kind of strange that they didn't do folding props on the Mavic Air. I'm really not sure why they did that. Because I guess one con of folding these arms up is that it does get a little bit awkward when you're folding the arms and trying to get them over top of this bottom landing gear right here. It just makes it a little bit difficult to close up for putting inside the bag. And while I love the DJI Spark, this one does have a two axis gimbal and you're gonna have to settle for 1080p video on this one and arms that don't fold. So it was kind of a turnoff 
to me that the arms didn't fold down on this. I really wish they would have made folding arms on the Spark. Maybe they'll come out with a Spark 2 that will have folding arms. Now each one of these DJI drones do have object avoidance and that's very important to a lot of new people first beginning to fly or if you're in a really tight environment and you want to get some really nice shots and you have some trees left and right where you have some type of objects that have a nice contrast ratio, these object avoidance cameras actually do a pretty good job at seeing what's in front of it. It will shoot a beam out infrared and it'll come back to the drone and it knows to avoid things and go around it. The Spark does have object avoidance coming from the front. It sees things from the bottom but it doesn't see things side to side or from the back. The Mavic Air also sees things from the front also from the rear and from the bottom and the Mavic Air does see stuff from the front and the rear and from the bottom. The Phantom 4 Pro, that one has object avoidance too in the front right here. It has IR cameras on the side and it also has stuff on the rear. Two cameras here as well, two sensors there, two sensors there and it has sensors on the bottom. So you pretty much have all the angles covered with the Phantom 4 Pro for the exception of the top of the drone. Now the Mavic Pro remote that comes with it, it is foldable, but the gimbals, the sticks do not come off. That is kind of a bummer because the new sticks that come with the Mavic Air, they actually unscrew and they fit right up inside here. So you can fold it all up and it's really easy to transport. Now these antennas do go down, but the Mavic Air has a big difference in range over the Mavic Pro. So the Mavic Pro is gonna get you around four miles, uh, but this one they say will get you four miles, but it's running on Wi-Fi signal. So in my experiences with Wi-Fi, you do have a lot more breakup and a lot more lag with some type of Wi-Fi signals back to your device versus something like DJI OcuSync. So OcuSync, I've never had really any lag troubles with that on my particular Mavic Pro. And if you are thinking about the DJI Spark, keep this in mind that this is more of a selfie type drone, a uh, selfie drone, what we would call it, something you keep close in proximity. You don't want to fly this one way out there. And the range on the phone Wi-Fi signal is only going to get you about 300 feet, so uh, maybe even less than 300 feet with your phone. Now, you can expand that if you get the remote that comes along with it. This is the remote. It's very similar to the Mavic Air, but it does not have any type of uh, way to remove the gimbal sticks. They are completely attached to the gimbals underneath the stick there. So that's one thing to think about there. As far as transport, this is a lot smaller, but the sticks are not removable like the Mavic Airs are. And now are reports on the internet that people using the Spark transmitter, you're able to get out there around 1.2 miles, which is pretty good. That's further than most people can see. And uh, that's gonna extend your range quite a bit from using the phone. So I would recommend Again, I would recommend using the remote control with the Spark because using my phone was just kind of frustrating, honestly. Now, if you're looking for speed, each one of these drones does different things. This one is going to get you around 30 miles per hour, and that's pretty fast. You're going to be in sport mode. You're not going to have any obstacle avoidance at that top speed. Most of the top speeds of these drones, when you're in those top speeds, you're not going to get a true obstacle avoidance. It's going to pretty much shut down. You're going to fly into things in front of you or beside you. So keep that in mind if you're flying in sport mode. Uh, the Mavic Air and the Pro is actually getting around 40 to 45 miles an hour. And I've actually heard some people talk about how both of these drones have topped 50 miles per hour in their testing on YouTube. So you might want to look around and uh, see some of those videos, top speeds for the Mavic Air and the Mavic Pro. I think you'd be pretty surprised at the top speed close to 50 miles an hour is pretty good. And the Phantom 4 Pro, even though it's bigger, it's going to get you around 40 to 50 miles per hour in sport mode. And even though it does have a lot of obstacle avoidance points on it, you're also not gonna be able to utilize those in that top speed mode. Now let's talk about battery life as far as the indoor hover test goes. And this kind of gives you a good idea of what a perfect environment with no wind would be like for this solid hover. And just for a hover test for the Phantom 4 Pro, I was getting around 23 minutes to 24 minutes hover time per battery uh, indoors with no absolutely no wind now with the Mavic Air that one was a little bit different story that one's advertised to be 21 minute flight time and that one I was getting around 18 minutes hover time with this with absolutely no wind or GPS on it uh, holding it back in mid-flight or any type of environmental condition so keep think keep that in mind and think about that that's 18 minutes for that one and around 23 to 24 minutes with the Phantom 4 Pro I was getting around 24 to 23 minutes with this one as well um, and it, this is indoors no wind and no GPS just flying right above a solid surface so also for the DJI Spark I was getting around 12 minutes flight time uh, on that one so hover test got me around 12 minutes on the Spark 
So the Phantom 4 is the winner again on the battery test for each of these drones. Now one thing we need to think about when you're flying each of these drones is where you're going to be flying them. If you're flying them in more of an urban environment where there's a lot of people around, or you're going to be flying them out in the country, somewhere where you have a nice big field like what you see out in front of me here. If you're going to be flying in larger areas, obviously the Phantom 4 Pro is going to be uh, one of the best options for that in a big wide open area. If you're flying in smaller compact areas, obviously the DJI Spark is great for that. Uh, now also noise factor is a big thing with people. Some people want to fly a drone that's a little quieter and some of the newer props have a little bit quieter sort of report versus the older Mavic Pro props are a little bit noisier but I found the Mavic Pro was a lot quieter sounding than the original Phantom series quadcopters. Those are synonymous with that noise. Everyone knows it out in the public. People hear it and they, they know it's a, a Phantom. So uh, people that fly drones, you can hear that from several hundred yards away. It's pretty prominent. Now the new DJI Mavic Air, that one's actually pretty quiet. It's a little bit louder obviously than the DJI Spark, but when I'm flying the Spark and I'm out a couple hundred feet out, people really don't notice that I'm flying the Spark. So uh, this one probably has the smallest audio footprint over top of the Phantom 4 Pro being the loudest. So somewhere in the middle is the DJI Mavic Air. That one's gonna be sort of a mid-range noise level. And you can probably get away with flying that one at your local parks if you uh, have permission to fly there. Now moving on to the flight modes, everybody's looking for something like follow me or point of interest, but DJI is getting really complex with some of their flight modes. Most recently they have some new updates on the Mavic Air and that one probably has the most up to date flight modes on it, featuring modes like Asteroid and other new stuff coming. New firmware updates are always coming from DJI, so you're probably likely going to get some new features as the year goes on. And that's a good bet with DJI stuff because they're always updating it. Every time I turn on my drone, it seems like it wants to update the firmware. That's one bummer of DJI drones, but you're constantly getting new stuff all the time, which is also really cool. Now, for the kids watching this video, if you would like to have one of these drones, but you don't have a thousand dollars to drop down on a brand new drone that has 4K video and all that good stuff, you just want to fly a drone that looks similar to what DJI drone looks like, I would definitely suggest the ATOP XT1. It is a little Wi-Fi drone, and this one has pretty cool features on it. It does have folding props, unlike the Mavic Air over there. So it's funny that the toy drone has folding props, but the Mavic Air doesn't. Go figure there. It also has a tiltable camera. It's gonna get 720p video. It has these sort of little look-alike. Um, those are not, those are LEDs in the front. They're not object avoidance, but from the very top, it looks almost exactly like the Mavic Pro. That's pretty neat. Folding props and folding arms, a little battery on the bottom, and this one's gonna get you about six minute flight time, and it does fly from the phone or a controller. So it does come with a controller, which is also kind of nice. So if you're just getting into drones and you're sort of thinking about training yourself, before you go out and buy one of the DJI drones, I would definitely spend under $50 on this one. Play around with this one in the front yard, learn your orientations, if you learn to fly line of sight first before you learn to fly a GPS drone, that's going to give you a huge advantage over other pilots out there. And this little guy has buttons on the very bottom so the arms do fold in. You can fold this arm in, this arm in, and pretty cool for transport. Uh, this one's also foldable like the DJI drones. Pretty neat. So you don't have to spend a lot of money to have fun or fly quadcopters. That's the, I'll try to put a link down below for that one. That's the Aptop Atop. XT1. Pretty neat little uh, Mavic clone, if you will. So enough tech talk, guys. Let's go out and fly each one of these drones. Let me show you how the video looks for each one of them. And depending on what your budget is, you can decide on the drone here on the table that's the best for you. So this is the best of 2018 from the Drone Camps channel. Please do subscribe, you guys. I have tons of DJI videos and other quadcopter videos coming all the time on the channel. We have over 550 videos now. It's kind of insane. So thanks for hanging out, you guys. Enjoy the footage. And we're gonna go ahead and start out with the new, hottest and latest DJI Mavic Air. Here we go.